Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. This is Stacy Kruzik from the Zebra Developer Relations team, and welcome to today's Dev Talk. We're at about 9:58 a.m. Uh, U.S. time, Chicago time. So we're going to give it a couple more minutes and wait for people to jump on, and then uh, we will be underway with our Dev Talk. So just give it a moment or two. Thank you. Hello everybody, it's 10 a.m. and I see that we only have a few attendees, so we're just going to give it another few moments. Um, we seem to be having some technical difficulties with this platform, so be please be patient with us for a moment or two. Okay, um, I'm sorry, there seem to be some technical difficulties today. So if you're having any issues, please put something in the question box and I will try and address it. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and start uh, the dev talk so we can record this for anyone who may miss it in the future and for you for reference. 
Um, just a couple of notes here today, um, housekeeping rules. Um, we generally take all of our questions at the end of the session. Uh, so we would appreciate if you would just type your questions down in the question box, and then we'll go ahead and um, address those at the end of the presentation. Um, a couple of other things too, if you haven't already joined our Zebra developer community, please feel free to do so. You can go to that link down there that developer.zebra.com. You can obtain all the information on the webinar um, there as well as uh, a plethora of information for all Zebra developers, all things. Um, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to email us at um, developer at zebra.com and we can address that as well. Um, if there's any other questions, uh, again, please put those in the question box and we'll go ahead and let this get underway and see what we can do to address any technical issues. If at any time you cannot hear, please just address those in the question box and I will address those. Um, and with that, I'm turning it over to um, Manuel. Manuel, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, so, great. Hi, hi Stacy. how are you doing? Great, thank you, good luck. Okay, thank you. So, hi everybody. So today we wanna talk about how we are uh, we are optimizing our LinkOS multiplayer SDKs. So I'm gonna talk about a little about uh, my role. So I work with for the ISB team in the uh, printing organization. My role is basically support our ISB developers to uh, integrate the hardware with our, uh, uh, with, um, our software our hardware and software with your applications. So today, we wanna we wanna cover the uh, next agenda. So we wanna uh, get a little introduction to APIs as the case, just to see how the important are now. Uh, why we wanna go through this presentation with, through optimization, and we wanna review LinkOS SDK as a case study. That then we will have some few minutes if you have some questions, and hopefully we can answer them. Otherwise, we wanna we wanna answer those uh, in another day or through emails. Okay, let's start it quickly. So why are the SDKs and APIs the new treasure today? So basically, um, we have been working for with SDKs and APIs or with the software in, uh, during the last 60 years. We can just review those movies from Apollo where they start to use the IBA machines and with Fortran and so on. Then that time to now, it's almost 60, 70 years. And then how, why now we are going to um, see that kind of value that our APIs are getting through the market. So some 60 years of evolution in the software. Now we have, and it's just, you can see as uh, uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning, the, that is no new concept, but uh, now having been an explosion of all of the combination, because now you can have data with them and you can provide those APIs and monetize the data. So the studies, the one that I referring here is basically based on companies uh, from the financial industry who are sharing their APIs because they, they saw a lot of value for third parties who are using those APIs to uh, uh, make money. So and the same way, many companies now are going in the same way. See what is doing uh, similar things with Savannah um, um, platform and uh, also um, with our data services. But here we wanna talk about specifically about the SDKs and APIs that refers to our printing uh, um, development uh, tools. So when we talk about SDKs, we are talking about um, toolbox. So it's just no APIs. So we are talking about many different development tools. So including the uh, software package, frameworks, also uh, best practices, um, IDAs, plugin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, in particular, we want to talk about today about the multi-platform SDK, but in addition to that, uh, we offer a seri uh, several tools like Cloud Connect, Browser Print, Print Connect, Network Connect, Car Studio 2.0, and then another that talks uh, this year, so uh, to 2020, we will be presenting those in, a, in additional, uh, in with more detail. Now, as enterprise software developer, that's basically the, the reason why you are here, um, we have a different ways to interact with you. So there are three different ways or two different ways that you can interact with us. So what uh, what is basically the idea? So we are trying to improve the developer experience that you have with our printers. Basically, that's the reason why we developed those SDKs. And uh, we uh, have a very experienced team 
uh, developer team who normally are working every day uh, doing this kind of process on the left. You can see this is an engineering process for software development. So going to planning, analysis, design, implementation, and go on. So and, uh, at the end, the products, the SDKs, the ones that you can download from our website. And uh, normally when you do that or when you use those SDKs, you will have a very easy integration, you save money, you save time. And um, But sometimes, and we understand that, uh, there are some use cases that are not covered with the SDK. So in those particular cases, you come through us, through our uh, customization customization team, and we take those requests. Obviously, you have to uh, you have to pay a fee for those particular use cases that are not covered with our SDK. But at the end, after the engineering process, we include those into our next releases too. So at the end, we are doing a. Uh, on cycle um, process to optimize uh, the APIs and the development tools. Now, there is another way that you can work. Basically, you can um, you you don't want to you don't want to use our SDK, so you can go on your own, uh, develop the own libraries. But that uh, means a lot of time and a lot of money that you have to invest in your own. So our recommendation is go with our SDK. Try uh, to use our SDK if you don't have. Uh, what you need, you have different ways to report that. So one of the uh, best place to go first is go through the uh, developer forum that we have in the, uh, on the link that uh, Stacy provided at the beginning. Put your questions, put the needs that you have. Otherwise, if it's something more urgent, we have a dedicated team that can cover those uh, questions. And also, uh, you can use our developer, uh, sorry, our channel for uh, technical support to report specific needs that you may have. Okay, why optimization? Again, we have been maturing uh, the software techniques, the software knowledge, and um, and now we have a software engineering. So that particular kind of thing allow us as a expert, a experts in our technology to uh, find different level of optimization for our SDK. So we can talk about technology adoption and harmonization, complexity absorption, architecture and logical implementation, customer base and support. And I'm gonna go quick through the, all of those uh, different categorizations to explain and to highlight those uh, particular, particular kind of optimization that we have done with our SDK to allow you to do a better job and in a faster way. When we talk about technology adoption, so we need to talk about printers. So that's basically what we have done for the last 51 years. So we uh, we uh, we were born in 1969. So now we have 51 years in the market. And uh, basically, at the beginning, always we have been uh, um, manufacturing printers. We had two different kind of printers. We have uh, car printers and we have uh, label receipt printers. When we talk about the SDK, we are covering both aspects of those printers. So I uh, don't want to go through the uh, differentiation of those, but we can talk about the common aspects like both are thermal print, uh, thermal transfer printers. When we talk about development, we talk about print jobs. So basically, that's the option to send a label to the printer or to send an image to the printer, whatever it is for car printers or through the uh, label and receipt printers. Uh, there are different, uh, there are um, uh, similar ways to communicate with the printer. We are using different kind of libraries to do that. And it's common for both to work with templates to simplify a lot of work for uh, end users. And also uh, we wanna talk about status printers so to provide a better uh, user experience. And uh, at the end, um, both printer manage image in different ways, but uh, both manage image. Uh, all of the new generation of car printers, when you see on the left is we have the CD500, uh, uh, CD300, uh, uh, CC 300 printers, that's basically the last generation of our card printers. Those are basically link quest printers. Okay, going through technology adoption, we have three different subcategories that we want to mention. The first one is the instance and virtualization. Instance and virtualization basically allow us as a developer to work with the link quest operations. So, and uh, into the link quest operations, um, link quest is basically the operating system of our printers. So when we go about link quest operations, you can basically talk about printing, we talk about profile configurations, errors, alerts, and go on. And also we have another categorization, utility tasks that are not related with the link quest operations, but allows you to work with the files. So you can have a storage, 
image files, or you can have files conversions, graphic download, convert fonts, and convert graphics. And the last portion of this is features customization. Sometimes, again, as, uh, there are some use cases that are not covered with our printer. So in those particular cases, we allow developers to use the CBI. That's basically a, a, developer, a development platform that you can use uh, inside of the printer to customize apps for particular actions that you need in your uh, use cases. If you need a little more information, let us know. We can help you with that, with information, or with a uh, group that can uh, help you to implement those customization cases. Okay, let's go through this and virtualization. The simple case that we have is printing, right? So when we talk about printing, basically, um, and the first simple, simplest case, we, we want to go from the simplex to the more elaborate and advanced cases. So for the simplest way that you can bring with our printer is basically using those uh, um, two libraries on top. One, uh, the connection one is basically an interface, and the TCP connection is basically a class. Um, so when you do this, it's just doing two steps here. So you uh, you create the instance in this particular case through TCP connection, and after that you open the connection and you send the data through um, basically through the uh, printer connection write data. So that's the simplest way to do it. And then you are closing the connection, and that's it. That's the simplest way to work with that. Now let's go through a little more elaborate way to work with the printers. Okay, let's think about that you need to uh, basically uh, copy or to save the configuration that you have done for your printer. One of the new libraries that we have been doing the last two years, last three years is uh, the uh, profile version and you can find that in uh, on the library that I mentioned on the top. So as you go to see the printer link OS library, you are able to capture the profile and from there, just a simple way to work. There are three different ways to work with the profile. The first way is when you create the profile. So you capture the profile from the printer and you save in this particular part, uh, in particular location. Now, the second portion, so you have saved your uh, profile and you want to return that. There are two ways. When we talk about backup, is when we want to completely capture the whole information of that particular printer, including particular details that uh, makes you need that printer, like uh, friendly name um, on, on another location and particular information that makes unique that printer. Otherwise, when we talk about uh, low profile, we are talking about uh, common things that uh, um, affect or you want to um, um, make the same for multiple printers, like, for example, how you want to um, configure the label, uh, width, um, and length, and go on. So uh, the, the, the portion of the configuration that will be similar or the same for multiple printers. So that's the difference between low backup and low profile. Okay, so the same thing, so you can clone your printer for multiple printers. We recommend to use Profile. This is a very useful tool, and you can find that in our, on your, on your right. You can see how that works very easily and very fast, and uh, doing just an example with our demo. You can download the demo later. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to show how you can download that. But basically here, you can see how fast it is to work with the profile and, um, and simple ways to, multiple, uh, to multiply that profile to multiple printers. So. Let's go to the next one. So another optimization part that we have done for the last uh, years is just um, improve the way that you can work with the printers and how you can capture the information from the printer and you can set up the printer. So basically, the easy way to do that, you can see here um, a strat of that through uh, uh, to the command and the library is basically the printer SGD. So the printer SGD allows you to capture information from the printer for the configuration and also set up the, conf the configuration of the printer. So there are two ways to capture the information, SGD get, and uh, to set the configuration of that particular, so you use SGD set. It's very simple, easy to go. You know, have a, a, um, if you have additional uh, questions, please use our developer forum to do that as a community will be able to help you. Now, the next one, another um, optimization category that we have done a lot of times is the printer error status. Our printers, uh, depending on the uh, kind of printer that we have, can allow you to capture up to 14 different um, status, error status. So and as we have a simple way to do it. We have um, um, 
document that we call the zero best practices and uh, where we can provide all of that information very easily later we're going to show or oh, we're going to uh, share with you guys the links on where you can find that and here basically how you can uh, simple to see how we are doing that printer status is just the library that you need to use to implement this uh, two simple cases here that we normally use uh, when the head is open or when the paper is out, it's just two simple ways to get through those status on the left side, just using our PPME application and how that's showing. Okay, let's go to technology harmonization, another categorization for optimization. So when we talk about technology harmonization, we are talking about how we uh, deal with different technologies in our printers. So we can have multiple hosts, multiple peripherals, May we can work with multiple drivers and also multiple SDK, third party SDK, but in addition to that, we had to work with different hardware. So we need to work with different sensors, uh, IoT. Our new printers are coming with IoT sensors. So, and also RFID, uh, the RFID, RFID radios, NFC, also cameras, or, or multiple communication interfaces, it will be Wi Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, with sockets, etc. So let's review one case that well, normally we want to show to demonstrate how we have it done this integration uh, and is the one related to our card printers. In our card printers, basically we have this ecosystem where our SDK do some things just to interact with third party SDKs. And when we work with the uh, printer card SDK, uh, we manage basically three operations. So printing operations is clear, uh, encoding operation, but only for magnetic. There are other operations that is not done with our SDK, but we need to use our SDK to position the card for those. And it's basically RFID operations. And um, the, next, uh, the last part is also we help with our SDK to improve the image operations. So we are able to build the object and uh, um, print those with different ribbon layers. We want to see that later too. The other kind of ecosystem that we normally work with our uh, printer SDKs, I already mentioned something about the CBI, and we are planning to add a um, print uh, Java engine for the next year to 2021. That's the schedule. The idea is to make it easier for developers uh, when they have a particular uh, use cases that are not covered with our SDK, make, you can cover those with our Java engine in our machine. So you will be able to manage any use case and uh, allows you to implement whatever you need to do in the market. How, okay, going to another case of technology harmonization, we had the one with the NFC TAC integration. So many of our uh, printers comes with a small uh, RFID TAC that comes with that. Uh, we call this technology print touch. And uh, what you see here is basically how that uh, is, uh, how we uh, have saved that uh, information of the printer for easy implementation for communication. So for this particular case, I'm gonna focus on the second one. That's basically our MAC address. And uh, then if you wanna do the integration on your side, what you need to do is here is just a small um, set of structuring of the portion of the code that you need to implement. Um, on the top one, you capture the, info, uh, the tag, you will create a payload. Um, with the payload, basically you go uh, to the to the library URL printer discovered and the, automatically the fine printers will find the second line, that's the MAC address here, to find your printer and do the connection automatically from here. So it's another optimization way that we have it done with technology harmonization. Okay, let's move to the complexity absorption. With complexity absorption, we have about four, uh, five different subcategories that we can talk about. Um, I'm gonna just mention a few of them for this presentation. The interface simplification, I'm gonna go to what are the advantages that we have done through communication interface and UX interface, uh, how we have done that with templates. Uh, just to mention multitask processing, some kind of task that uh, when uh, hardware is not, uh, able to do it, we can simulate those through the software. So we want to show just one case to do that. Also, the other ways that we have improved the discovery of the devices and how we can use or you can use the bidirectional communication. We want to talk about those and also we want to talk about security. Okay, one of the nice cases that I want to mention just to uh, see how our development team have done a wonderful job uh, simplifying the work of the developers is with the uh, communication interface. Uh, what you can see on the left side is basically the standardization that we have done to simplify the ways to communicate with our printers. On the right side is basically just an example that you can see all of the libraries and um, 
and um, classes that you need to use in case that you want to implement by yourself the same kind of thing. So on the left side, you can see for discovery, this portion of the part that you need to do for communication. You need to use uh, Bluetooth Discover, and uh, in case the same thing for uh, TCP, it will be TCP Discover, Discover Printer, and uh, Discover Printer Bluetooth. That's the portion that you need to do with Discovery. For, well, for the communication, for the communication, we have done a very nice thing, a nice work, uh, implementing the connection interface. With the connection interface, uh, you can move from Bluetooth connection for uh, directly to Bluetooth uh, LE com uh, communication or TCP or through USB. And as a powerful uh, library that you can implement for many use, uh, different use cases. Once you have it done or open the communication, so you can invoke the um, Zebra printer. That's basically the instance that you are creating in your application to implement all of the link OS operations. Okay, let's go to another and a nice case that our development team have done to simplify the work of the developers. Just thinking about that you need to uh, use uh, in your application multiples um, labels. So when you need to work with multiple labels, the best way to do that is using templates. When you work with templates on the left side, basically you see the sample code that we have for print station card. So the card portion on it. On the right side, you see the print station that we have for the label and receipt printers. And uh, again, so the simple way that you can see this is when you need to work with multiple labels in your application, in your company, and uh, you don't want to start, uh, you don't need to, uh, you don't want to modify the UX. So for that particular case, the templates is the, the, the best way to go. So let's talk about a little more detail about the templates. All of this is related. The first, this the screen that you're seeing here is basically focused on the card printers. So for the card printer, we have the right side where we have the layer to an XML, uh, where we, we show on the top part of that is where you define how you wanna set up uh, the template, also how you wanna set up the, uh, the fonts and the sizes, then we have two ways to work here. The first, the first part is the front of the car and the uh, bottom part is the back of the car. And each kind of uh, portion that you wanna print, I'm gonna explain a little later what means layer, but uh, it's when you have multiple uh, layers on one side of the car to print. And you manage that with just simple operation through here. And um, when you work on the back side of the car, you can implement the barcode, and there's basically one sound lines to do that. All of these sample codes are, are uh, is available for reviewing and implementation directly from our uh, SDK, uh, sorry, from our website. You can go there, download our installer, so you can work those, and you have all of the information that you wanna need to do to do this implementation. And I'm basically gonna move to this one here. So just to the US interface simplification. So we have done the same kind of thing for, this is for card printers. And uh, you basically create the connection the same way that I was explained before. So the connection is just an interface. It depends of uh, um, what kind of communication you wanna implement. And, and the Zebra card printer is basically the instance that you are creating. So after you create the connection, you open the connection, and you create the instance with Zebra Card Printer. And um, for the template, just you're using one line. So this line, Zebra Card Template, generate template job. So you have on the left side, the template, on the right side, they basically the variables. Then you send the job ID to the printer, and that's it. You will print your template. Let's move to our label and receipt printer. It's a little more uh, span concept. So here we can have two ways to manage this. You can see on the left side how you can manage the information directly, but that is a template that you can use, but not in XML format. And the one that you wanna focus today is on the XML format. So you have on the right side, two ways to do the same thing. On the right side is the XML format. So you're working with XML. And uh, here how you can implement that very quick. And this line, you can go to our um, um, developer uh, um, portal and get the information from, uh, I'm gonna show that later, the links that you need to use. But here, basically what you need to do is uh, with this uh, XML printer, uh, you are uh, loading all of the information that you need. Destination device is basically uh, the communication uh, port that you're using for this. Uh, template file name is basically uh, where is the data. Um, also, the quantity string is just a default value one, uh, output data string, and also the verbosis is just uh, true, 
as you see on the top of this, you send this to print this and you will get your uh, template printed. Let's move to uh, one other case. We are talking about multitask processing just for uh, information. I don't want to go in detail about this, but in this particular case, we want to say how we did a very nice job simulating uh, a firmware. Um, we have a DOM, for example, we have different lines of uh, card printers and on this um, slide I've shown the CSP9, CSP7 and the new one C, uh, the CC300 printer and uh, in the past we were trying to uh, simulate or emulate different functions of one printer in another printer. Doing that through hardware is very difficult so we were using the SDK to do that. And that's basically the sample that we did through do CSP1 and CSP3 to emulate the work that CSP7 and 9 was doing. Okay, another way that we have done a lot of absorption of complexities through faster de device discovery. When you use our discovery uh, classes, basically you are filtering all our device, or basically uh, using our discovery class, you will be able to see only Zebra devices. That's basically uh, um, one of the nice functions that we have done in, in optimization in the last two releases. So if you go through Bluetooth, you will you only we you will be able only to see our Zebra printers. The same thing with device in the identification. When you go through discovery using the libraries, uh, you will be able to see six files in TCP IP. But when you're working with Bluetooth, you will be able to see two uh, two uh, the information, the MAC address of the printer and finally name. Okay, let's move uh, to another uh, complexity absorption that normally I like to show here because it's a very nice uh, ways to work with this. And it's basically how to work with the bidirectional route channel. And uh, one of the most useful cases that you can work with this is when you work with the RFID. When you work with the RFID, basically you need uh, to work in a bidirectional way with the printer. You send some information and you wait back some information the printer sent to you. Basically, when you're working, if you know how to work with RFID, so there are different um, ways uh, to work with those tags. One of the of those is to the APC, uh, how you can uh, encode the APC and how you can to, how you can get the APC back. And the other way is when you work with the TID, you want to capture the TID of the tag so to uh, to reference that tag later for the spe specific kind of product. So the, what you see here is a, the simple way to work with this using the again the print uh, the uh, the connection interface and using this uh, send and wait response for response is just the method that you need to implement to get that. The values that you hear uh, you see here is normally the values that we manage for um, Bluetooth connection through Android devices. So I recommend to you to use this particular kind of thing as you're working with RFID. Okay, let's move to security implementations. Uh, latest uh, with our um, latest in, uh, release of um, LinkOS, we have done a lot of work to improve the security of the printer. We have called this our print secure uh, strategy and we try to make the printer secure in different ways. So with LinkOS 6.1, 6.2, we have increased a lot of security in our printer. We are moving in LinkOS 6 points uh, um, for the next year since uh, 7.0 to SSH2 uh, security, um, but uh, for in this particular slide, what I try to show is how you can create some certificates to uh, increase security through Wi-Fi communications. So um, basically, yes, that's the portion that you need to do here, and um, we are providing the libraries. You need to go through our SDK uh, documentation and look for certificate package, and you will be able to see some samples to follow them to implement on your uh, applications. If you wanna uh, encrypt your uh, Wi-Fi communication, provide more security to that layer. Okay, let's move to customer base. To the customer base, uh, we have different um, categories that we have defined where we have been working to improve uh, our SDKs and provide a better uh, ways to interact with developers. Uh, from the developer user preference, we have done a lot of work to uh, make easier the ID integration. Also, programming language, we have uh, different programming language. We have C Sharp, Java, Android, iOS, JavaScript. And platform, we have Windows, Linux, and Cloud. Um, for use cases implementation, we have a specific um, 
optimization that we have done um, based on use cases. One of those is the multi-channel communication and multi-layer printer. I'm gonna go through those later. And on-demand requests is basically what we need to do based on what the, the market is uh, is doing or what kind of changes we have seen on the market that allow uh, force us to uh, make your work easier. Okay, let's go through the sample that we have here for customer base. And uh, it's just basically the uh, integration through external repositories. We are planning to do this in the future for um, Android, but uh, we have done uh, this with uh, Nugget and we have seen a lot of um, um, integration with developers. They have, say, uh, they have seen how we made the things easier for them for integrate that into their um, software projects. So we are happy to see how the number of developers have been in, uh, increased using our SDK through Nugget and we want to continue doing that through Android. So basically that is uh, simplified a lot of things so you don't need to deal with the configuration of your project at the beginning. So that is done directly through the uh, IDA and that's basically one of the major advantage to work with those IDAs. Okay, let's go to the next one. That is another, another nice one that we have it done. And it's basically uh, done to reduce time for batch printing. Uh, you had this use case when uh, you use one printer from multiple users and you wanna work or you wanna reduce the time for those uh, for the printing. And in this particular case, uh, the, the um, um, libraries that you need to use is the multi, uh, we had this for Bluetooth and um, TCP. So um, the one that you need to look into our libraries, you go to connect uh, to printer and then communication printer and communication printer, you will find one for multi-channel TCP connection for TCP and the other one will be a multi-channel for Bluetooth connection. And those are the libraries that you need to use to implement this use case. The other one that I wanna highlight today is the one that we have for um, card printers. And this is the one, the card multi-layer printer. So it's another very nice way that our developers have been integrate our SDK to supply um, use cases from, from the market. So in, on the right side, you see basically how the cards work. So they work with uh, different layers and with different kind of securities that needs to be printed on uh, any of those layers are physically layers and we are converting those to a uh, software layers on the bottom side on the bottom you can see how we have done that when you say car side front it's basically the front side of the car and each line of this is one layer that we have simplified and, and the overlay color silver resin is each layer that you see here so if you need more information, again, go to the documentation. The one that you need to implement is the print type. The print type is, uh, the, you see here, is all of the layers that we can provide depending on the ribbon that we sell in the market. On the mar market request, is basically when well, the market tell us what we need to do to simplify the work for the developers. We have done a lot of work um, the last two years to, sim uh, to improve our S uh, sample call SDK. So you will see soon a new um, um, release where uh, we have done the sample code developed in Android Studio just to verify that uh, runs well, doesn't have any trouble, and uh, make easy for you the integration with the new projects that you're working on. So that's basically the way that uh, we have to respond to the market needs. So we have been moved from, uh, in this particular case, Eclipse to uh, Android Studio. Let's go now to architectural logical implementation. So through our uh, architectural logical implementation, our SDK team have been working to keep the APIs opt, uh, optimized and also current and updated. So have been working to have those uh, library reducing the bugs that uh, may, we have had in the past and uh, keep those updated just to implement basically the uh, portion that uh, is working with uh, repositories uh, when we want to do this through um, uh, our uh, implementation like Nugget we did in the past. Also the architecture, we have a simplified simplify the, uh, the architecture to make this easier for integration. We wanna go through that later. And also for data, it's important, we are working with data. So we have two different ways to interact with our printer. So individual using SGD or two data sets using JSON. 
Okay, this is our architecture logical implementation is based basically on the functionality of our printer. So there is portion of design for printer discovery. And also we have another printer connectivity, all of those, you can see those as a package and uh, you can go to the documentation to go there. So printer status checking, um, font conversion, graphics conversion, template filling, simplify painting, command mode, printer management is basically uh, the uh, modules that we have based on our architecture to simplify that. For all of those, you will have developer demo, sample code and documentation. Let's review for data access. Uh, at the beginning, we were talking about how you can access for configuration through SGD. Here, what I try to go is through the other way to work with the configuration, but no configuration. We are managing that information as a data. So if we are managing data, we are talking about JSON. So in JSON, you can collect a lot of data. For example, when we talk about profile, we have done that through JSON. So we capture all of the information. Our printers, label, receipt printer, manage about 800 different uh, uh, set of uh, variables. So you can get all of that package in, in one set through the JSON and uh, manage all of that with your software. And um, in this particular case, you are seeing it's a simple way to do that. Uh, through Android, just to capture a specific kind of information of that. So um, if you need more information, let us know. We can provide a little more samples to do this. For support, just the last part uh, that we have it done. To do optimization is not done only through uh, SDKs, uh, algorithms, and, and all of that. We also need to provide to the developer different ways to interact with us. So at the same thing, uh, we have one portion of that done with our SDK team, but also we have another uh, portion of uh, that we have it done through different teams. So customer support, we provide technical support. Also, we have our special services. Again, when your use cases are not covered with the SDK, you can go through them, the developer customization groups, let us know if you need that inf uh, information, we can provide that to you. Also, we have a developer relations team, so there are advocates, advisors, uh, that are already uh, posting a lot of blogs in our developer portal, providing you solutions, new ways to do the things, and uh, different ways to, uh, or different recommendations to make the things easier for you developers. And also we have our guides and manuals that allows to uh, tell you how to go deeper in our hardware and how to make those implementations. We provide blogs, white papers, and our several best practices. And uh, we always, always recommend to you uh, go to the developer forums. Our community support is very important for you to do implementation that others have been already done before. Again, so you can go through that and you can get the information from there. Now I am ready for questions. Do we have any questions? I don't see any as of yet, Manuel, but I'm watching. And so if anybody has any questions right now, please let us know. I think we had a technical difficulty where it had put out for 10 p.m. this evening, but everybody was identified um, and an email was sent out. We're also recording this webinar for everyone. Um, so everyone will get a link to that as well in their follow-up email. If there's any questions yet, I'm not seeing anything. Give it another moment. Okay. Um, well, just give me one second before to finish. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So uh, before to finish, just I want to go through uh, our developer portal just to tell you guys how you can use our uh, resources very easily for your new project. So go to, you go to the developer portal and uh, you go to develop, go to API documentation and API documentation, you go to printing. In printing, you will find two steps of uh, links, one for label and receipt printing, the other one for card printing. One that I recommend to you to go is our best practices. So go to our best practices here. This document is developed for the ISVs and developers. And uh, if you want to go uh, to develop applications, so we have a uh, build this document to help you to do that. We have also some samples code here that you can use. And uh, you just go easily to go there and see how to do the implementations. So we recommend basically to do this 
and um, because uh, by about ten, uh, eight, 10 years of uh, internal work that we have simplified here for you guys. So use it, if you have any question, let us know or something that you think that we need to do to improve it, I will recommend you guys to do it. And that's it. Otherwise, uh, see you next time. Thank you guys for your uh, time. Take care, bye-bye.